Hey there, boys and girls. This is a review on Aryan Perimeter. It's chapter eight in your textbook. Let's go through the review. First of all, let's talk about the area of a rectangle. Uh, there's two dimensions that we're usually interested in. Usually we're gonna say this is the width, how wide it is. Then that means that this will be the length. And before we start, I think we should probably write down what some of the important um, formulas are going to be for today. So for area, it's going to be the width times the length. And for perimeter, it's going to be the width plus the length plus the width plus the length. And we'll talk about that as we go along. So if I have a situation like this where i got to figure out the area, there's pretty well two ways that I could do that. Because it's on a grid, I could just count the squares which the pros of that is it's kind of usually could be uh, fast as long as it's kind of small. But the other way, it's probably easy is the best. The cons is if this uh, shape gets really large, it's suddenly going to become slow. And I could be prone to making mistakes maybe. So counting is okay for small things, but not really good once you get to larger shapes. The other way is just to multiply. Basically, how many rows by how many columns. The pros to that is it's generally fast. The cons is I guess you have to you need to know your multiplication tables, but that's not so bad. So typically that's what we would do for this. And this is a three by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three times seven. And this one's going to be 21 units. It doesn't say this is centimeters, so I can just say units but it's important to say squared. Usually you should put the two a little bit higher for that. Okay, let's keep going. Well, if you had a question like this, where we have to work backwards, where they tell us the area of a shape, but we don't actually know what the dimensions are, we'll probably end up working in a table. So this time working backwards, the area is gonna be 24, and what is the length and the width? I kinda of want a table where I get all of the possibilities. So usually when I'm doing a table like this, I like to start with either the biggest or smallest number that I can use and work from there. So let's say the length is, I'll go with a small number. If the length is one centimeter or one unit, then the width is gonna be 24, because one times 24 will give me 24. And I can also, because two also goes into 24, I'll get a 12 there. And will three work? Will three go into 24? Yeah, I believe it's eight. Will four work? Four goes into there, that'll give me six. Will five work? No, and I've already got the six. So this is really all the possibilities right here. There's four, four different possibilities for that. Really, you're looking for factors that go into 24. So these is the four possible rectangles that could be made with an area of 24. And now let's do perimeter. Perimeter, of course, is the distance around the outside of the shape. Now for a rectangle, you have a formula. But for something like this, we would just be counting around. So one way to make sure you don't make a mistake is to do something like this. So one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. Or sometimes people do this and they go around. So this is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna let you do this one. Uh, what I'd say is mark the start and go around and you can figure out what the perimeter of something like that is. Now sometimes the shape are more organic shape. This is mostly a grade five, but there will be a grade four question probably similar to this or similar in design to something like this, where you've got some kind of organic shape or some kind of funky shape with curves and you've got a grid. You can either, if I provide a grid, you would do the grid right there. Sometimes we have um, these grids on transparencies you can stick on top. It looks kind of something like this, where you could put that on top of a shape and figure it out. Now, there's a couple of methods to figuring out something like this. Well, this is a whole shape, a whole square. So that's easy. That's a whole square. That's a whole square. That's a whole square. The whole squares are easy to figure out. But what do you do about the small parts? There's a couple of methods you can do. You can find a small bit, <coughs> and you can match it to a big part. And you could, you know, every time you have a small piece that matches a big piece, that's a whole one. Another way of doing it is to kind of use a rounding method, where if something looks like it's half a square or more, we're gonna count it. And if it's less than 
half, we're going to ignore it. And we're going to assume that <clears throat> if we counted all the small pieces, they actually would match up with the big pieces and life would be good. So really, we're just looking for ones where it is going to be more than half. Like, for example, this here. I'm going to put a circle in there to show that. That's more than half. That's more than half. That's more than half. That's more than half. This is a full. This is full. This is full. This is full. Uh, I'm not sure about that one or that one. This is, this is more. And what I would do then is I would add up how many check marks I have and how many circles I have. And that would give me kind of an estimate, a rough idea about the um, area of something like that. You should be able to explain how you figure it out. Again, we're looking for the one, the pieces that are 50% or more covered. And we're kind of rounding up and we're assuming that we're not going to uh, talk about the small pieces because they would really match with a big piece. Uh, somewhere along the line. So it's kind of a, a rounding method of figuring out when you've got a funky shape. Here's another um, idea where we have a perimeter of 36 and we have to figure out the dimensions. For a perimeter, I'm going to route the formula again. It's W plus L plus W plus L. And in my table, my perimeter is going to be 36. But really, I find it's easier to work with, because there's four things here, I find that just worrying about the W and L is a lot easier than having to do it twice. In order just to consider the W and the L, we really need to cut the perimeter in half. So if the perimeter is 36, I'm going to say half the perimeter is going to be 18. And so now I have my W and my L. So the... W plus the L has to equal 18. So what I've done to make it a little more simple is I've cut the perimeter in half so that I can just worry about what the W plus the L is going to be. And again, I like to make one number small. The biggest number has to be 17. So if one, protect, one potential, um, one potential rectangle would be width of 1 and the length of 17. And then width of 2 length of 16, with the 3, length of uh, 15. And eventually I'll get to the point where it'll be 8 and 8, <clears throat> pardon me, and that's where it'll stop. So this would be a potential table for something like that. The trick with perimeter then is instead of using the whole perimeter, you've got to worry about four different variables going on here. If you cut it in half, and then you're just worrying about W plus L equals that number in half, and that's a lot easier to worry about. Now let's look at areas of triangle. There's a little steps here. Let's just take a look at one square. What is the area of this one square? Well, that of course equals one. If that equals one, then we know that this has to equal half, right? You put a diagonal in there, it's half. So one of the steps along this way is just to imagine a large rectangle that encompasses this triangle. So for example, if I draw a rectangle like this, this whole big rectangle now has an area of two. That means the triangle itself, half of that has to be a one. If I draw this like this, I've got a rectangle that's three by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three times seven equals 21. So half of 21, is 10 and a half or 10.5 that would be the area of this triangle so one of the easiest ways to do it is just to imagine a rectangle uh, that encompasses the triangle here's another one here this defines that and this is 3 by 8 this time so 3 times 8 equals 24 so that means that this triangle has an area of 12 half of it okay that's how you do those guys Sometimes you might get a shape like this where they give you some dimensions but not all the dimensions and what you'd have to do is you'd have to divide this up into different pieces um, to kind of figure this out. There's enough information on here. The first step is to create squares or rectangles, then figure out the areas of all those and then add it all up. So I'm going to cut this off here and cut this off here. You could also cut it off in different directions. It doesn't really matter. But now I know that this is a 2 by 4, so that gives me 8 
centimeter important to put squares up there. Now this is two. I know uh, this is two down here. So two and two is four, but the whole thing is eight. So that means that this little part here is four centimeters. Again, this is another two. And from here to here is four. So that means from here to here is now six centimeters. Four centimeters plus six centimeters equal the whole of 10 centimeters. Two by four equals eight centimeters. Now I'm left with six by eight. Six by eight is 48, I believe. And then I can add 48 plus eight plus eight, 24, so I think that, 24, sorry, 24. So that becomes 64 centimeters important to put squared up there. So and for these ones here, you have to break it up. And I'll let you do this one by yourself. Um, you're going to probably break it up this way and figure out what individually what all those little uh, shapes are in order to do that. Let's work on one more. Let's say that the area equals 24. And I know that, let's say that the um, width equals 6. Then they ask you, what's the perimeter? How do I go from area all the way down the perimeter? Well, once it, right away, I always write down the formulas. And I know that perimeter down here equals W plus L plus W plus L. So let's start with the first one. The area equals W times L. So the area equals, uh, sorry, 24 equals 6 times L. So something times 6 has to equal 24, and that equals 4. So L equals 4. So now I know that the L equals 4. Once I know that these two uh, numbers, now I can come down and fill it in in the perimeter. Perimeter equals 6 plus 4 plus 6 plus 4. That part equals 10. This part equals 10. The perimeter is e going to equal 20. So that's how you go from an area question and jump down to a perimeter question and vice versa. That's it, boys and girls. Good luck on the test, and I'll see you tomorrow.